what's up, YouTube? So in this problem, we're going to take the limit of this monstrosity. <laughs> so the limit is x part to zero of x squared times this creature here. So normally when you're taking limits, the first thing you want to do is you want to take this number and plug it in, right, and see what happens. So if we do that in this case, let's do it. You get zero, so you get zero squared times, and then here it's three times, three plus the sine of zero. So three plus sine zero, boom. Then on the bottom we have zero plus sine zero, so zero plus sine zero, and this whole thing is being squared. So the top, zero times anything is zero, so we just get zero, so this is zero. And then here you zero plus sine zero, zero plus zero, so it's just zero, so zero squared, so zero. So this fails, it's a huge fail. It does not work at all, right? Just a complete waste of time uh, in this problem. Uh, and it, you, you kind of knew it would be, right? Otherwise it wouldn't make a video, right? Why would I make a video where you can just plug in the number, right? So how do we do this problem? Well, it's a little bit tricky. So I'm thinking, and here's the motivation for this. There's a two here and there's a two here. So maybe we can combine these in a clever way, right? So watch this. We're gonna write this as the limit as x approaches zero, the top will leave unchanged. So three plus sine x. And watch this, you can bring this downstairs. You can write it like this, x plus sine x squared over x squared. And then you can put this in parentheses. This is the same thing. And I was gonna skip a step here, but I decided not to. So basically, this can be written this way. Check it out. When you, when you take this and you divide by this, you multiply by the reciprocal, right? So it's the same thing, right? Division is multiple. If you just flip it, you get the same thing. Now we can combine these. This is the step I wanted to go to, but I figured let me show an extra step just in case. This is 3 plus sine x over, and then you can take this and write it to the 2 power, to the squared power, like this. Oh, this is so cool. What a cool problem. So now you can write it like this, and you say, why is that useful? Because now you can break this up. This is the limit as x approaches zero of three plus sine x over, and then check this out. This is x over x, 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 x over x is one. Sine x over x, sine x over x, sine x over x, and this is squared. And this is where the magic happens, right? x over x is 1, sine x over x is sine x over x. x over x is 1, sine x over x is sine x over x. Okay, now check this out. When x approaches 0, this is a famous limit, right? This limit here is 1, right? It's a famous limit. It's not that famous, but it's pretty famous. So if you take the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, that's equal to 1, right? That's famous, right? The famous, famous, famous limit. Um, and then up top, everything is good, so now we can take the limit. When we take the limit, we get 3 plus sine 0. Just plug in the numbers. And then on the bottom, we get 1, and this limit is 1. So 1 plus 1, and the whole thing is squared. Sine of 0 is 0. So we just get 3, right? Because this is 0. It goes away. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So we get 3 fourths. So all of that just to get 3 fourths. <laughs> That's it.